everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar with dear friend Tim. Tim Hi. is from 311. 311 is a great band, and Tim's a great friend. How are you doing, yeah, Tim? Good, good, good. Happy to be here. Happy to do this. We yeah. did one about eight or nine years ago, so one yes. of the first ones you did yes. in Iowa City, so it's come full circle. Oh, nice, yeah. So uh, let's see what you got. I know you got Absolutely. a lot of PRSs, right? We do. We have a lot of PRSs with us right now. We what have, your um, main one, you'd say? Uh, main one is this blue one. Was this a blue number one? We call this one Old Blue. I have so another. So that's the one back in the day. This one is, yeah, yeah. This is uh, 99 if I'm getting it right. But it's, um, it's had new hardware and things over the years, but it has been my main guitar since 99. Um, what have you dug just, about this particular model, the, this particular guitar? Man, even? you know, I have a lot of beautiful guitars yeah. that they make, you know. Um, and one thing I keep always coming back to is the stop tail. Um, I have a couple of guitars I love that have like a Fender style mm -hmm. Strat, vibrato, or tremolo, whatever bridge, vibrato, or, and uh, other things. But I always come back to this. I'm just so used to it, I think, you know. But um, I think it's just a comfort thing. Yeah, you know, right. I have guitars, definitely have guitars that sound better and things. But it, it for, for me, for live and recording too, it just, it's comfortable to play. Really. And you have no and qualms with to bring it down on the road with the, being such a special guitar that you've had. No, no, that's part of it, I think, is yeah. just having the love in there. But um, it's nice, you know. It's cool. We got a Bob Vessels. Ooh, with the Tiki. Tiki in there. But, it, uh, but it's great. So this is the number one. And is this know. one with the new pickups? or is This is the one. Yeah, we were just talking a little bit about pickups. You know, yeah. We, we um, go through and been trying a lot of different pickups. This is a... Um, now, if I'll, I'll probably blow it, man. There, it's a Seymour Duncan. He, Donnie just told us it's a sentient. In and, the neck, I think. In the neck. And then, do you remember these? Pegasus. Things? And a Pegasus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they sound good. We've been rolling with these for, we had these out, we put them in in the summer. So they did about half the summer. Yeah. And they're with us right now. Um, the other ones vary. You know, a lot of Seymour Duncan pickups all across there, 59s. You know, I like the Jeff Beck a lot, but um, these other couple have 59s. I talked right to now. you during the uh, Stereolithic period with, uh, with that album a couple of years ago, and you were talking about how you were kind of leaning towards PAF and lower output pickups. Is that kind of still your MO? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you, so, what, why you go there? Um, you know, I have this, um, some of these amps, just so much gain in there mm -hmm. that trying to go, you know, it helps with a clean amp and a dirty amp to keep them kind of in the same ballpark of balance. Um, definitely prefer that going into a clean amp. And then the, the, the high gain stuff like that Bogner, it's just got so much that it seems to help handle it a little bit more dynamically for what I got going yeah. through all this stuff. So. Cool. But, um, but yeah, just a little more dynamic maybe. But, but yeah, this has been good. I feel, I'm glad we got to give those a shout out. I never, that was a friend of mine uh, Jeff Diamond recommended I try those, and we did, and uh, Seymour Duncan's been so kind and uh, generous to us over the years, but yeah, I'm, I'm I sure, had never heard of them before. So I'm sure good. they're pretty, <laughs> it's pretty nice to have this guitar as being your bass line because you're so intimate with it that when there is something changed on it, whether it's a bridge or pickups, you can hear that probably pretty instantly. Absolutely. Or defined. Absolutely. And the um, in-ear situation, yeah. too, with the mic right on there. Um, you hear a lot of the specifics of the, um, you know, the frequencies or the tonal aspects of the pickups that, like you said, if he's in different guitars and everything, I might not pick up on. Yeah. And so you can really put them under a microscope, but uh, it's fun. You know? <laughs> yeah. But we have a lot, you know, we mostly I just play the one guitar all night. And you is know? that what's blues uh, ride in, like stand, uh, for tuning? So That's that just standard? an A, yeah, okay. A440 or whatever, standard okay. tuning. If I break a string on that, we go to this, which is the same guitar, just no paint on it. This one's actually older. Those are 59s, the Duncan 59s in there. But um, it is, yeah, there's not even a truss rod cover on there right now, but that's like, uh, my eyesight's whole horrible. I can't tell if that first number is a three. It's old. Yeah, it's I think probably it might a vintage three. guitar, yeah, yeah. So this is probably, or, geez, isn't that horrible? <laughs> I can't tell. It's that number anyways. I should have looked. It's old. This is like my, one of my oldest guitars. Oh, right. so anyways, it's older than the blue one, but it's built the same. Is this one same. mahogany? That is just yeah. a piece of mahogany, the neck, everything. <clears throat> so it's 
straightforward electric guitar, but it sounds great. Do you, you feel know, that's darker good. than having like a uh, maple cap or? You, you know, yeah, I would say. Yeah. The, I really do enjoy the maple tops, which I have down in here too. I, I have one of them set to uh, a drop D situation. And that's this one. We have a, a handful of songs in drop D. And so I'll keep this one. This has got the PRS pickups in it, which I like a lot too. That is a uh, 5815 yep. sets in there. But this guitar I love too. Um, it goes between drop D and just regular tuning so I can get, use it more. Yeah. You know, like sometimes it's the number one, my main guitar if I'm not doing the blue, but, um, but I love it. This is from Transistor era for us. So I use this on that album. Okay. Um, so it's 97 maybe or something. That one's easier to read in 97. Yep, 95. Or is the seven the first one? I think number? the seven's the first one. Okay, yeah. If I, you know, I, it's not horrible, I don't know, but. You're going to ask Ten Paul. top, yeah. But yeah, it's a beautiful guitar. Straightforward, just kind of deal there too, but. Um, and with your setups, are you yeah. asking uh, Donnie to, to have high action, low action? Where are you kind of like, do you like to have a I like setup? it low, but I, it is, you know, t reasonably low. Yeah. You know, with I do the like buzz. it the easier to play, yeah. And but, uh, as we're going through all these, are these? Yeah. I'm sh I know that you're a big Ernie Ball guy, but yeah. uh, what uh, gauge are you? They're all tens. With? Okay. All of them are tens. Yeah, except for this Schechter, which is my seventh string. What's it this just comes out on? for one song which one? of ours called um, Mind Spin. Okay. And where, I, you, you know, I try and do it on a baritone. I have a PRS baritone too, but. Um, I need the high group of strings for the outro of the song. The bulk of the song is down on this low B because it's just standard tuning once again. But man, they gave me this guitar years and years ago. I've had it for a long, ever since that song basically. And Chad, our drummer, wrote it. He writes a lot with the tuned down stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in fact, all these guitars are probably, I definitely use those on Sexton songs. But um, so yeah, I utilize this low on most of the song and then the outros on the highs, but it plays great for so I have a hard time with the width of it because yeah. I'm kind of a, I'm so used to it, <laughs> but it, so it's a little harder to play, but it is a, it's a great sounding seven string. It always amazes me to see Steven from the Deftones play because yeah. he has those yeah. seven and eight strings. They're like uh, aircraft carriers, those fretboards. <laughs> I don't know how they do that, man, but it sounds cool. I love Steph, he's yeah. awesome. And what's this last one here, the second one in? This one is, uh, I love this guitar. This is a Fuji Gen. It's, um, I'm a big fan of um, like the, uh, um, now I'm gonna forget just cause I'm on the spot. But uh, I have a couple of, I don't even know if they're lawsuit guitars necessarily. The um, Bernies? Bernies, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I have a 335, a Les Paul, just killer guitars. And I met, uh, a friend in uh, who worked for Fuji Gen at the time, and Kazu, buddy, thank, uh, yeah, Kayundai, and <laughs> but he hooked me up with this, and it's a beautiful guitar, man. I love it. It's a Fuji Gen, and it's a Expert FL is the model. But I use this a lot to record. It's just a great sounding Les Paul, and it plays real nice. Uh, right now we have it in C sharp for um, a song off our new record. And it's only the low E string is tuned to C sharp. The rest of the guitar, A on up, is regular. Huh. So it's odd. But Chad, our drummer, wrote this really cool, cool riffs, right? But um, we try, try to get around it every which way to see, okay, maybe I can do it with a normal E, but you can't because you got to bounce off this low C sharp. I tend to call it D flat because I'm a started on trombone yeah i don't know if, why i'm think more about flats for some reason <laughs> but uh but yes so this one's in c sharp but typically you know for halloween um i'm hoping to go as ace freely this thing will be a oh nice probably be the main guitar that night because i didn't bring my bernie last paul which yeah I, I, know. I wasn't thinking i left without a costume in mind but Damn. But yeah, I love this guitar. You're going to put uh, fireworks Gen. or sparklers on this? We've like talked Ace? about that. Yeah, what to <laughs> do, the you know? With the smoke? Like, yeah, yeah. They probably make something like a pickup nowadays. I didn't even look into it. I'm sure there's something out there on the internet. God, man, I'm going to figure that out. But yeah, love this guitar. And then the rest are PRSs, no you know? 
No, no explorers not last with time we us. Th yeah. No, man, I do love those. Are oh, man, yeah, those explorers are sweet. But we just got, you know, these are backup. Just uh, this is another one. Just uh, it's the sister or brother to it's beautiful. the the natural top. Yeah. So I got these the same time back in '97, probably. I guess. Yeah, it they're was, beautiful. It but yeah, that's nice. A tortoise shell finish on there. Uh, PRS pickups, and these were brand new pickups when I got them, uh, and I just, I can't forget, I can't remember what they call them. They sound really nice too. No, I never remembered stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> no. it's horrible. You're too busy I remember creating. how they sound, but yeah, but that's a, that's a nice one. And then uh, the only other one we got in here, this is New Blue, and this was a gift from them um, years ago when we first did the SEs came yeah. out and they had an SE model uh, that we did. And then they gave me this was like a um, new version of my old blue guitar, but uh, it's really nice. It's, uh, it's nice and light. It feels good. And these were rolling with, uh, that's a 5708 that we have in there right now. But we do change the pickups out a lot. But so this one, uh, yeah. It's nice I think it's too. a cool story that I know that you, you kind of stumbled upon the PRS, the red, the cherry one you had, but yeah. you stayed with them because uh, the stories, your story you've told me, and I'm sure countless other times, is that the band, you got broken down or you had a trailer fire or something, yes. and they sent you a guitar and you thought that was the coolest thing. They, yeah, we had an RV fire, and long story, but the RV burned and my Volkswagen van again was being towed as the trailer to haul yeah. gear and the the key to the trailer hitch was in the van the rv that was burning oh. long story but it caught, the fuel line caught on fire and it was pulled over we got out but uh we lost all the gear and we didn't we were on a route to a gig that night we didn't play but we played the next day and i used a friend's guitar that day but then the very next day we played a gig and i used a guitar they had sent like overnight to me and just save the day you know and it's like some, so you guys kind. are such a yeah. low low like yeah, yeah. Kind of band. we're just starting you yeah. know what i mean and and um and i love that prs you know and then uh they were just so kind and no didn't even question it just sent it and you know it was such a nice gesture and it really uh, helped me out so, so big time on <laughs> the guitar you know but uh they uh, yeah really nice folks over there and yeah, it's amazing it's been that long. That's why I trip out sometimes when I look and it's like 97. Gee, that's Damn. like 20 years old, that guitar. Right. I don't know what vintage instrument is. Yeah, but it's getting there. Something. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's, con let's continue yeah. with the rig here. You got yeah. the amps. So yeah. what are you looking at here? I I've seen you numerous times. Normally, I associate with the diamond stuff, Spitfire yeah. Phantoms. Yes. And I'm sure you still have those at home and use to record. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what's what's the story behind the Mesa and the you know, a lot that that's a part of it that changes a lot okay. you know the there's on the output of the the pedal board is one out for clean amp and one out for a dirty amp and so the the dirty amp late for a while has been the uber shawl i've mm -hmm. had this uber shawl for a long time I, yeah. I like it and and or the diamonds you know and stuff and and a lot of times rectifiers uh boogie stuff mm -hmm. um and so the clean side of it, you know, whether it was the diamond or a lot of times boogie, a lot of times I have these Fender, um, um, Bob Blankenship did, uh, took the Fender um, Deluxe, a couple of those and hot rodded them kind of, just up, did some upgrades in there and put them into head chassis. And he's so, got great names for his mods. Like he's got like the sour cream and like that's what he calls yeah. some of his mods. He has the greatest names for those. I mods should have asked him what that was. Yeah. You know, he does those sort of uh, things for deluxes. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone can send it to him, whatever. But uh, I kind of know him a little bit. I live nearby him. So he did those. They turned out really good. But um, I like being able to have an effects loop for the delays. Yeah. You know, so typically um, and the big wattage just for the 4x12s and stuff. All the, the deluxes sounded killer through the 4x12s. But um, right now, I have a Mark V in there, which I just got recently before the tour, which I love. It's been great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a uh, big fan of the Mark IV. And mine sounds pretty good, but it's not, um, it's been a minute since I've traveled with it and stuff. And so Tim 
you know, talking to Tim over there, and he hooked me up with that. But it's uh, it's been know, great. So I'm just starting to get into the market. Do you know what tubes are in that one? That one's a six L six. Okay, yeah, because they can run yeah. all sorts of tubes, maces. Yeah, you know, I the thing I found too over the years is that, I, I mean, I like six L sixes. I just wonder, I, I, I don't know. It's weird. Like I, I love this six L six clean. Um, all the channels in it sound great. The modes and stuff. Yeah. I've been like tonight. It's just strictly for a clean tone up there but uh the mark 2c plus in it yeah it's killer things like <laughs> that you know so i'm just i have the foot switch up there but live on two i don't have it i'm not going to it yet yeah just because i'm just comfortable with the clean right now but uh but yeah it's a great amp and the uber even the uber the clean in there will track with you know in the studio some clean stuff and is that probably got mostly, 34s in it just that for the, does for yeah British, okay and I, I almost i'm so used to with the diamonds and even with this uber and things i got used to the el34 clean which yeah. i i would have never thought until i got back into the 6l6 and then um so that's one thing i'm, I'm finding uh the feel difference in the mm -hmm. different tubes you know from the clean on the clean side of it um but uh but yeah mark 5 has been great so far and and lets I, me use the effects loop. Yeah, I was gonna say on top is that where the Lexicon comes in through the effects yeah, loop? Yeah, this, these right here, one's a backup, but I just have one in the clean amp and one in the dirty amp, and it just, I like how they sound, but it's you know I wish there was another way, but uh, things go so fast live, so I have Donnie changes yeah. it from song to song, so they'll just come out here and do it all analog style, which is great, and they they sound good. It's simple and. Um, easy to look at and see where you're sitting on a delay time and change it if you have to. They're a little squirrely, um, but I'm just used to it. Yeah, you know, sometimes like the squirreliness sound. adds to the flavor of the vibe. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, too on the note or too, too on dead set is almost jarring. Well, you, yeah. like you, have the, you like to have that little wobble. Yeah, that's right, the wobble. That, <laughs> yes, I like that. I do. I do. And it seems like, uh, I don't know, maybe if it's the uh, Free the Tone, one of those has something that helps make it not on top of itself so okay. you don't cancel or whatever but this uh these are great i mean they're just kind of they're old I was they they're old friends good. yeah 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 that's from ron st germain he hit me to those whenever that was it's a long time ago but um you know so it's just one each and in, in the amps and um the uber stays on the high gain side and right now the the boogie just stays on the um, clean side of, of gotcha. it. But yeah, it's just, and then it's nice because if you want to swap out a dirty amp or a clean amp, it's easy to do yeah. just and fit it in and use it. So. And how are you running your cabs on stage? I know when we talked last time, you had the two outside cabs for your clean delays, and then you had your because you had the four stack. Yeah. And then you had the two center rows for your dirty setup. And now yeah. I see a lot yes. less cabs. So. Yes, yes, that's right. I forgot. You know, I see some photos of that. It looks cool with the artwork on there and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is downsized. So we got just one dirty and one clean. The dirty is uh right here and he runs that's what his mics i tend to like this heil to listen to and then uh scott at front of house scotch he's our producer too but he does our front of house it's awesome to bring him along. it's great yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he, he knows the music better than anybody and uh, but he's got his you know we both like that heil and then he's i don't know if it's a buyer dynamic what that is right there he likes that one for some of the loudness and then the old 57 yeah. over there on the clean and we try different things, you know. I just always go back. I'm just used to, I think, how the 57 sounds. Yeah. It's kind of like, like we were talking earlier about blue. It's like a bass line. You always kind of know what you're doing, yeah. what, what you should get with the 57. Yeah. So it's it's really straightforward. You know, we have those. These are actually diamond cabinets. Um, they've been re-screened with some fender screening. But those are just vintage 30s or, you All right. know, the standard kind of straightforward thing but they they sound good i do like different speakers but these are just good and we like once again just know what they sound like mm -hmm. and very usable but um but yeah it's funny that it it, it that's it just changes each year a little bit yeah. you know? <laughs> that's why you're that's always right. a great candidate for yeah. a rick rundown yeah, not it. only do you love, love gear it. but it always yeah. is changing yeah and speaking of uh changing let's dive into your pedal board because i see some uh differences here yes 
Yeah, yeah. Boy, it's changed a lot too, probably. All right, yeah. Tim, we're at the mothership here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> walk me through your signal <laughs> chain right. and talk to me about what's going on here. All right, well, we got, uh, we're coming in right here, input there. And then the first thing after the, it, it sees is there's a buffer down in this box down there. And I wish I could remember what. It's a Dave Phillips special. He likes had it. LA Sound Design mm. did this board for me. Yeah, they do good uh, work. It's real beautiful and clean considering how much you yeah. got going on. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It'd, it'd take me years to be able to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Dave does a really nice job. And so it, it sees the buffer first. And then it's into the, this is a, I guess it's a 300L. The, uh, they don't make that anymore. I like this volume pedal, it's probably my favorite one, but um, into there, real simple, the tuner out just goes to the tuner, and then we're into this uh, custom audio wah, and then after that, uh, we're into, it goes out of here into this box right here, this three banger, and it's got the boss octave in it, uh, this whammy, which it goes in and out, send and return there, loop kind of thing out to the whammy which is over here and so i just access it on and off there um and then it's got the envelope filter right here and that's a i'll make sure i get it right uh mu effects microtron 3. yeah it's mike bagel or yeah. bagel is the new company yeah or latest company and you know my favorite is the uh, mutron 3 envelope filter it's just the best my favorite. It's huge. And it's huge. Yeah. And the power issues for it and stuff. Um, and then I, and I still have those that I love on, and I, I have like three of them. One of them works perfectly. The other two are suspect. But uh, then he made after that the, the bigger kind of gray one. Um, and, and similar, I'll, I'll get it, I'll probably say it wrong, but it's a great sounding envelope filter too, the predecessor to that. And then that's the most recent one. And uh, it sounds great and the smallest footprint, yeah. easy power um, and stuff. So it, and it fits nicely where we needed it to, but uh, uh, the filter there. And then I go, you know, we were talking about kids earlier, I have a, a daughter named Sunshine and then a, a son named Tim Jr. Um, and so eventually we get into this Timmy pedal, but I came across that, you know, the Tim pedal. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta get a Tim pedal just to get it. and then. Then I saw the Timmy's and I was like, I got to get it just to, before I even read anything about it, I was like, I got to just hear it or get it because it's a Timmy, right? Yeah. And then I was like, holy shit, this thing sounds great. And so I really like that as a, as a kind of booster. But um, then I came across this Sunshine pedal, which our daughter's name is Sunshine. And so I was like, I don't care what it sounds like. It's called Little Miss Sunshine. And people are saying they like how it sounds. I got to try it. And, I get, and then I heard it and I was like, damn. It sounds awesome. It really sounds great. You know, I'm a, a phase nine. If that wasn't there, there'd be a phase 90 there and uh, an old script one. And that thing's really great. So I use it like for phasing and even univibe kind of things. Um, Were you ever a fan of the 45? The yeah, and I love the 45 okay. too. That's the thing, like to me, the between the 45 and the 90, there was one incarnation that I had them both. Yeah, there's, I think there's, it's called the 100. Where they, you can create, you can switch between the two different. Yeah. 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 And then the bigger one, like Garcia had mm -hmm. that one. So they all sound nice. But this one is a just one phaser to have on there, uh, true bypass kind of thing. And the, it's easy to get w at with the foot, you know. And that's, I do change that quite a bit over, you know, just to mess with it and, you know, from full on to all the way slow. Mm -hmm. um, but so it's nice to have a Sunshine and a Timmy on there. But uh, so the, after the phaser, then I got this booster. And this is, um, I, I'm tr it's called a Pegasus now. It would be um, his company, but um, Exact Tone Solutions, who are actually in Nashville. Yeah, they're here, yeah. Yeah, so it's an XTS Pegasus, basically. But before it was a Pegasus, it was this pusher pedal that I got from Greg. And I love it. I found out about that from John Ziegler forever ago. And so it's just a great, just clean boost. And it's easy to kind of adjust here as I need it, but it just seems to help me kind of cut a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know if it's a treble thing exactly, but it just, it helps kind of carve out a little space there and clarity wise. Um, but then after that, we got the Way Huge Blue Hippo, which is um, 
Great chorus pedal. I really, really like that one. I, my all-time favorite might be a CS9 Ibanez, mm -hmm. and um, which I ha I have a lot. I use that one a lot. But this one is just great, and um, I love all George Tripp's pedals. He's he's a cool designer. But this one's been uh, been on here for a while. Been using it, and uh, it got a nice vibe to it. Then after that, we hit this uh, delay here, this analog 89, and that's just in a loop box there okay. to kind of keep it one thing to keep it cleaner sounding wise but this is just way easier to turn on and off for yeah me that's too the thing that's kind of about those ibanez or maxon pedals or the the trigger on is sticky hard. for yeah. me yeah so just to keep a flow with it um but after after that delay it goes to the ab box and um right there it's on the the b side is the clean side it'll send out of here to the timmy and I use that kind of as a cleanish boost, a little bit of gain on there just to beef it a little bit and get it a little bit more going on. Um, and then I have my, this XTS uh, Precision Overdrive, which is like my favorite overdrive pedal. It's great. I, a lot of times we'll have two of them and kind of have one at a lower gain, one at a higher gain. But this Timmy is kind of the lower gain and that's more of the higher gain. Um, and together they sound real nice. Even like this pusher into these sounds great. So I tend to just combo them up a little bit. Um, but this party loop then is this board okay. out here. And that's just an extension loop out here that I, you typically always has a looper. It's this is at Electroharmonic 720 right now, but it changes a lot what mm -hmm. looper. Um, and this Synthwa is always out here, this DOD there, uh, or Digitech, shit. Did that take a place of the MXR? Because I know you used to have the two envelope filters, one for clean, obviously the Mutron, and then it, the dirty one. Yes, you know, it. this one is more just for like special effects kind of synthy stuff. Okay. But I do miss having two of them, and it seems weird, but right now I just have the one, so I have to tap dance a little bit. Mm, okay. But that is one thing that I miss with this compared to some of the, the other ones. But. Uh, you know, being ha be able to have it set up. That's why this on the clean, I totally, you know, the have a couple of delays out there too, but the reverb, tremolo, and this looper can have access to here too. Okay. So I can have it set up, you know, playing heavy, dirty, and, and then have a, like a real super big reverb sitting there ready to cut to, mm. or with the tremolo and stuff. And um, all these effects, are they, able to hit both amps or are like that those clean effects just in the, front the clean row or, okay yeah th this front row it's hits both amps actually okay so that hits both and decided upon right here mm. when it goes to the dirty it just goes right from here into the dirty amp and then when it goes to clean is when you hit these gains that party board and that hits the el capistan and then the free the tone uh delay and then out to the clean amp gotcha so this one a lot of times uh, I'll cut from the, the Bogner just dry, dirty, um, and then switch to clean and have it set up with these delays, real more wet um, kind of look right there, you know, so I don't have to switch and then set it up. But uh, Well, man, let's, let's hear some of these. Yeah, oh, dude, I should have said that when I was going through <laughs> them, dude. We're, My God, we're just, I'm so I was just sorry. trying to get a lay of the land yeah. with uh, yeah, your you signal know, path. Yeah, this, uh, I should have been when I'm sitting here talking about this thing. You know, it's just a, but it does all you need out of a phaser, man. I mean, I, it's rare I use it like that. But, uh, you know, you throw some high gain on there and. So that right now is just like the, uh, the. That's the just the boogie, boogie right here, the clean. Yeah, so the, at, when it comes off the board, the clean amp, the B side of it is the clean amp. It comes to the Mark V and the A output there of the AB box comes to the input of the Ubershaw. And so this is just always set up on the high gain. And then in the effects loop, it has this PCM42 for delays. Okay. And then this, the Mark V has its own PCM42 for delays. And then those get changed by Donnie, my tech, um, song to song basis, kind of. So it's in, I get them, you know, right, pretty close usually to the tempos. <laughs> And how are you making changes, like, uh, to reference the newest, latest album, Mosaic, uh, too much to think, like a song like that, uh, 
where you start out real clean and then at the end towards the end you have the outro like the real kind of I guess fuzz solo or whatever you're doing. That's to Nick that. too, so you should ask him about that. Okay, we yeah, will yeah. ask Nick yeah, about yeah, yeah. that. That's but a how cool are you start? Is that, so is that just coming through the Mesa then, like yeah, the clean tone? It actually is a clean tone with, um, like the Timmy and the the uh, precision on okay. together, kind of just to give it some beef. And then there's a lot going on in there because I use the L cap for the in the choruses for the ambient kind of wash in mm -hmm. there, and. You know, sometimes a lot of, a couple of the new songs, especially I'm using the Blue Sky reverb with modulation and some things like that, which is kind of nice. Like, uh, it's... So it just gets big kind of, so that's like uh, on a song called Perfect Mistake on the new record, mm. say we're just playing with the dirty, dry, and then stops and then it cuts to just clean just break down kind of with that reverb so you know set up like this i'd just be from the dirty and then rock 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 and then you know so there's kind of the specialty stuff out mm -hmm. here you know for fun you throw in one of these just weird kind of synth <laughs> yeah. sounds stuff like that but um yeah man th there's a lot you know i wish it's, i would have used it when i was talking about it but you know, it's like a, it's tasty that. Yeah, envelope. and that's like a, that would be like a, a, a tone I hear like with Amber or Love Song. That's Amber Love Song. Yeah, Champagne. You know, and it, it gets it's a nice uh, tasty one. It's so I love envelope filters. There's a lot of them, so many of them out there, and they all have their different personalities and how, stuff. How know? did you get into love with them? I know that you're a big Dead fan, but yeah. like, what was the yeah. aha moment where you're like? Oh, this, I get it now. Because, like, it's an envelope filter is kind of a weird thing to it, get, like, into. It is. It is, man. Do I, you have, I, like, a moment where you're like, okay. It must be, I mean, if I can say Acid and Jerry Garcia imprinting me somehow because <laughs> yeah. it's just so expressive to me. And the way he uses it especially is, exactly. is just the best. But uh, even Homie and Slipknot or whoever, you know, using them, they're just cool. I li yeah. like the uh, just filtering kind of things are cool. But, uh, but yeah, so it, you know, that's the core of what I need. You know, there's over the years, there's so many different little specific, you know, I could have a whole nother side over there if I really wanted to be authentic about mm -hmm. getting the exact sound. Oh, you're so, pretty authentic right now. I mean, you got yeah. a lot of analog gear out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then it's nice having it out here to be able to tweak on the, the um, chorus, the rates and things like that. So. What about, uh, I'm just quizzing here. What yeah, about yeah. like a uh, old song, Beautiful Transistor? People probably interested how you oh, yeah. try to get tones from something that's recorded so long ago. Yeah, the, well, yeah, like that, like. Like the intro, like the uh, octave kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's one, the octave pedal is the oldest pedal I've ever had, or the, the one I've had the longest mm -hmm. or used the longest, other than a tuner, although, Knowing me, maybe I had the octopel before the tuner, but I, I don't know. But uh, so that one, it seems like we're pretty, like we we both know when. Hey, this is time to apply the octave into uh -huh. single note stuff, and and we do a lot of dual leads and things like that. Sometimes we'll use the octaves when we're doing dual leads and stuff. But um, you know, really, it's just I, I know it kind of needs to happen for the sections, and yeah. then. I'm going to use what I got out there to try and get her done, but the octave's always with it. Like, you know, like if I had to have one thing off there, that's probably the one I'd take. Really? Yeah. I get, you know, I'd hate to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're not going to restrict you, but yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's great. Nothing sounds better than taking your guitar and plugging it in the amp. That's the best. And then it's like a, from there, a compromise, you know, and trying to make it, um, you know, whatever, have all this stuff and have it still sound good when you're not using any of it and things, so, but it's fun. It's like a little, it's like a hot rod or something, you know, you're just tweaking on it all the time. Killer, Tim, I appreciate it, dude. Oh man, Chris, brother, good to see good you. Good to see you too, man. Yeah. We'll talk to the rest of the band. Yeah. All right, we're on the other side of the stage now. Got Nick here, Nick, how you doing? Real good. Good, thank you very much for taking the time. My pleasure. Uh, looks like you got a lot of Gibsons here, so we'll get right to it. Uh, which one's your number one or the one you probably play the most? Well, um, my brief history of guitars is that first uh, I loved Les Pauls. I got a 63 Les Paul gold top that I found in a pawn shop on a camp camping trip to Canada. That was, I had got that when I was like 14 wow. when my dad found that. 
sadly, as often happens with Les Pauls, you lay it on the ground, so, someone stepped on it and broke the neck, so it was yep. super tragic. But Les Pauls have been probably my main thing. Um, so I play a Les Paul on on the older songs, always on like Down and Homebrew. It's just so com compact and just has that, that sound. Um, and then later I started to get really into hollow bodies, um, 335s, 355s. Um, I usually uh, modify them somewhat. What took you down that path from the Les Paul? Was it a tonal <sighs> thing or like a kind of a, just to be different than Tim with him having the humbucker? The jazzy tone, yeah. to have the, the, the warm jazzy tone, you know, playing in, in the neck pickup position. Um, and then I found to give it a little bit more bite, I put a P90 in the, in the neck position okay. and keep the, the humbucker in the bridge. Uh, I usually put my own little Hexum um, truss rod cover on there. Uh, and then all, somewhere along the line, I was given this flying V, which- Just screams rock and roll. It, it's louder than, <laughs> than a Les Paul. It's, it's so hot. This one has the, uh, the robot self-tuning features, okay. which we probably don't even use anymore. But honestly, the reason I like this is just because of the moves, you know, you can, <laughs> you know, it's so this is like my beautiful disaster okay. guitar. Um, but then most recently, I've kind of found the best of both worlds um, is the is the Johnny A and it's it's a they don't make a, a lot of these. It's a very expensive guitar. But uh, it still has the hollow body sound um, of, of a 355, but then the smaller body is just, it's a little more comfortable. I can move around with it more. And, uh, and this thing just sounds great. So I've been playing this all summer uh, and it's kind of like my new favorite. And I talked to Gibson about taking this even further of doing something kind of similar as like a, a signature. Yeah guitar for me. Have you ever gotten your hands on, uh, I think it came out about a year or two ago, is a Les Paul, but it's called the ES Les Paul, which has the, it has the semi-hollow construction with the Yeah, F I saw that. I haven't so played So it gives you a little of bit of both. I did have a, a hollow body Les Paul um, back in the late 90s, um, but I wasn't into the hollow body sound as much at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. That's really been about the past 10 or 12 years. I've really kind of needed gotcha. that that hollow body just to make it sing more and when I'm playing clean in the in the neck position just gets that jazzier tone I mean my favorite guitarists are you know Wes Montgomery Grant Green it's just something about a hollow body yeah that uh, has just a magic to it and when you uh, use the p90 in the neck is that more for cleaner tones or for like your overdrive or like a dirtier sound uh, that would be for cleaner tones okay if I if or a, a, a semi dirty. Okay. Um, but yeah, when I'm full distortion, then that's going to be the humbucker in the bridge position. And what about? Uh, I know you, you like Tim, our Ernie Ball family. So, uh, what strings or gauge are you currently using on your guitars? Uh, I moved to from tens to elevens um, about ten years ago. I just felt that uh, a, a lighter gauge string was just too rubbery for me, um, and I would. I would lose control and overbend, mm -hmm. and also just um, knowing how Stevie Ray Vaughan played like crazy, you know, thick strings. Yeah. It, there's just um, something about it's a more vis visceral thing to, to have the heavier strings in there. Almost like fighting with it, yeah. the guitar. And then one thing I didn't mention, I also fell in love with, with Bigsby's, the Bigsby tremolos, um, anything, any of our new songs for the past um, eight or ten years have, have had a guitar with the Bigsby on it and to me it's you know the perfect perfect amount of bend it's not like for like heavy metal dive yeah. bombs it's just for like just to, to make it sing real textural yeah and especially when you have reverb and you can give it kind of a surfy slide sound just by it just a slight bend down to just make it fill up the the bandwidth more yeah um, and also when you're soling, you do it, combine a bend. I never got great at like, you know, bending and vibrato at the same time. I was, mo I'm more of a, a do a bend and, and use the, the whammy bar. And it looks classy too, especially on a guitar like that with the gold hardware yeah. and the gold Bigsby. Yep.
And what about picks? Are there any spe uh, specific picks or like gauge picks that you go or you just kind of grab whatever you f get your hands on? Um, I don't know the measurement, but I move to a, a stiffer pick. Um, you know, I've always just believed in remaining teachable and I've actually had like a bunch of different guitar teachers that I would, because I want, I realized there was gaps in my knowledge that mm -hmm. I wanted to, to fill in and one of them kind of explained to me that you can play faster with a with a harder pick so I, I use a fairly stiff Tordex 311 pick. Nice and uh, here's where we would transition to amps and effects but uh, that's behind your little wall of speakers here so we'll just talk about that. Uh, Mesa Boogie I imagine if I had to take a guess. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of amps are you using? And uh, I, I saw that there's two back there. Is that one like a backup? And is yeah, that, okay. it, we, it, it's a there's a backup. The Road King too um, really has can do every amp that you want. You can do mm -hmm. a nice Fender clean, um, classic, heavy, dirty, mid mid gain settings, and uh, so that's been the amp for me for, for quite a while. Sometimes I'll actually use a two amp system where I'll have a, a fender, you know, with an open back because that has a, a, a slightly different clean. Um, so I, sometimes I use two amps, but lately I've just, on this tour, just had the, the Mesa. The Road King. Yeah. And are you using pedals to drive that or do you have like a, like I know Mesa's have the channel switching capabilities, so are you using the different channels? to get your overdrive or are you using pedals to hit the, f the front of the amp to get your dirt or drive? Uh, generally, I, I let the amp do the distortion. I've got pretty much three gain settings that I'll use, like a full jazzy clean, just with no gain, um, or a, a, a mid a mid gain, slightly distorted, and then full on mm -hmm. heavy, heavy sound. But as far as pedals, um, I do have a um, kind of a tube screamer type um, overdrive, but I only use it like halfway. It's the Analog Man King okay, of Tone. Okay, King of Tone, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a great one. Um, Kenny Wayne Shepherd is a friend of mine. He told me, he's like, you got to get that one. And there's like a waiting list to, to get one. <laughs> um, and I do use a compressor pedal, a Boss compressor pedal sometimes to just to even things out mm -hmm. more for for clean okay but then sometimes like on the the dual leads that me and Tim will do I'll have the compression on and then the delay is going to be in a, a, a loop so it's the delay part isn't being redistorted it's after the preamp mm -hmm. um, but generally you know I was just the lead singer for a long time and I got into playing guitar more and more gradually so I'm so busy running around that I've got, I call him Cousin Eric, my tech, yeah. um, doing the, the switching for me. So he knows the songs as well as I do, and, and he's doing the, the effect switching and channel switching for me back there, you know, as the song goes. So that's like been a great asset for me to have a, a tech. He's also a great player too. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I've never had a pedal board out front because I'm just so busy yeah. running around. You're pretty active on stage. And then, yeah, to have another thing to trip over, especially with Tim's huge setup over there. Yeah. And uh, I asked Tim, and he, he deferred to you because he said that's your part. Is I was curious if you could tell us uh, the tonal makeup or the equation of the, the outro to Too Much To Think, where it goes into that last little solo bit. That's the blue box, the MXR blue box that I first heard in, you know, Fool, Fool in the Rain, Led Zeppelin, that yeah. -doo 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 -doo. Like, that's just such a killer, killer solo. Um, so I started using one of those on the Uplifter album. Okay. And then that became the signature. I mean, it just overdrives everything, but it all, it's, it's a, it's kind of an octaver, it's kind of a synth. It creates an extra synth tone, but it really evens everything out. So if you look at the waveform, it's just like solid. There's, there's very little dynamics in it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, that was at the end of Too Much to Think, that, that solo and the solo that you hear on the album was the first draft of, that oh, wow. I put on the demo. And I was like, I don't think I can beat that, just use that. <laughs> so that's fun to do live because it ends with such a big, um, big solo and the music stops and it's me doing a big whammy through the blue box at the end that uh, very climatic yeah yeah 
And what about, I guess the only other question I have for you would be uh, delay. Is there a, a specific delay that you like to have or use on your board? Yeah, you know, I used to use more rack stuff, like Rocktron stuff that I, I got in maybe in the mid-90s. And then I've moved more towards analog pedals. Um, the Strymon stuff is okay. great. Um, like the, the Blue Sky and the Time Machine, those are great um, reverbs and, and delays. And uh, but I got a lot of great pedals back there. And I've tried to not keep adding and adding and adding because it makes the rig that much more complex. Yeah. One of the signature tones um, that I still cannot do without is the ADA preamp that was that I got back in like 1994. That that's the down sound. Oh, all right. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, ha it has a T wah and in the distortion. I've tried to recreate it with some. I mean, because that thing's been discontinued forever. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find, uh, and it's pretty temperamental. If it gets too hot, like it did on summer tour a lot, I there was sometimes where it overheat. So I've actually been looking for a backup Damn. for that. But that that piece is very distinct. So. Like I, I carry that one extra. There was a few years when I didn't have the ADA and it just wasn't the same just to use regular distortion. And so uh, that's kind of a signature piece of gear that I, I can't do without. And do you have an octave pedal on your board or is that something that just Tim kind of uh, rolls with? Yeah, I use a, I mean really the, the Boss Octaver is the signature 311 yeah. sound. So I have one of those, but I also use a, a POG, poly octave. Um, for certain solos that I want an octave above and below to really thicken it up. Um, but that's really, I don't play that as much as Tim. Like that's, that's his thing. Like yeah. it's, he calls it, you know, high T, high testosterone, <laughs> octave or with distortion. Are you uh, both running for like the intro to like Beautiful Disaster? Is that one where you probably both run the octave? Uh, no, I don't use an octave on that. That's just pure distortion, no okay. pedals whatsoever. Killer. Yeah. Well, Nick, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. We're going to talk pleasure. to Peanut. Thank All you. Right. Last but not least, Peanut was kind enough to uh, hang with us. Oh, the there's going to be continuity. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're just yeah, going to keep... This, don't watch this out of order and, and, and screw, our, well, no. screw our world. This is a, yeah. a flow. And oh, now yeah. we're to the last of the chain, which is the bass player. Yes. Not least, but last. No, no, no. Or, no, fine. wait. I, I, whatever. I, I didn't sorry. want the attention of of being a lead singer or, or, or a lead guitarist. I mean, I, I, was a, I started on violin and was a part of like a ensemble and to, to begin with and always loved bass players. So for it to pick up the instrument just made all the sense in the world. Well, we were going to work with Chad, but he was busy. So we're, yeah, yeah. we're going to talk to you about your gear. He knows a lot about my gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peanut, you're a Warwick guy. So talk to me about what you would consider your number one. What's your number one bass that you got over uh, there? My number one bass, and I am a Warwick guy since 93 is my signature series my my uh my main bass well that's not even it that's my other signature series this is my signature series three that came out in 08 and it's uh, basically a warwick streamer two that's what you started on right that's how you got to kind of get into the company yes okay yes i went to them when they were in santa barbara still or gosh maybe even before that when they were cl even closer to los angeles but whatever and got a maple and a uh, five string and uh, after we had an RV fire and my Tobias burned. Ooh. Yeah, which I, which I swear I've never paid them for. And, I, and I've talked to them, I tried to pay them. They're like, no, no you're, you're fine. Like, it's no, off the books. I, I owe you 500 bucks from a million years ago. And they're like, no, forget about it. So I, I went to Warwick after falling in love with Norwood and what he was doing with Fishbone and how just greasy and awesome yeah. and crunchy all those sounds were that he was getting out of an instrument that looked like it was just freshly cut from a tree so for them to greet me so warmly even back then and to make a signature series for me you know close to 20 years later was the pretty much the biggest compliment I've ever gotten from a, from an industry I know you're a big Jack Bruce fan and so then he's in the Warwick family he's been in there <laughs> since the 70s and yeah. that's it's cool to be right there yeah there's a cool pedigree I mean they're they're uh, their roster has exploded of late and it's it's amazing and to see it grow and to see the company and to, to just i don't know they're it's a big family you know like like you want your team to be and yeah. i think most good ones that last are i mean the, the the band us and warwick and just 
just good music that lasts is, has that kind of mindset. Like, we're going to do this because we love it, and we're going to do it because we love doing it together. Yeah. So, yeah, what is this? Uh, what is what it? have things that you have made it your own from just being another streamer, too? Right. We, uh, we, we changed the top, and we changed the back. Uh, my thing, my, my really one solid addition was to have Purple Heart. Uh, cut through the center of it oh, right. and sandwich in between the the face and the body but other than that it was just kind of like a committee of uh, figuring the woods out um, this is Australian blackwood burl and uh, the back is uh, Asphalia what was the idea or what was the reason behind going with the purple heart in the in between for the sandwich um I mean kind of more symbolic than anything okay. um, I'm I'm Scottish English um, I, I love the royal purple. Mm. There's something in it. Uh, and and uh, I know it's a good tone wood, but really it was more like, if I'm gonna do something different, it's gonna, it's gonna be, I don't know, it'll reflect my personality. Yeah. It'll, it'll be something different that might, may or may not make sense. <laughs> it makes sense now, because it's, I mean, it's for sale. Yeah, well, I know, just like, I'm gonna force this in, whether or not, like, it's gonna make it sound better or not. I'll make it sound better. And yeah. they, these have always felt like, um, even in 05, when we got the first one, and it was even rawer than this. The the sandwiching wasn't done as well, and it hasn't lasted as well as this has. And I've I've recorded five albums with this now. It's getting a really good uh, thumb divot where I place my 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 hand, and uh, I don't know. It's, it's held up fantastic, and I've beaten the living shit out of this bass. <laughs> and really are these have. the pickups that people would associate with your signature model? Or are these ones that you swapped in? Um, Warwick. Uh, never used Seymour Duncan's before. I is a kind of another thing that I, I forced them into. It was like mm -hmm. a, that's what I really want. They wanted to go with another like a German company, MEC, that I, I like as well. But they're real standard on yeah. their instruments. Like, well, if it's going to be a signature series, let's let's talk about what we're going to customize. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I wasn't really interested in making a body style. I'm, I'm not a designer. Yeah. But I love picking out boutique pieces I, I can make a good instrument from the the template that they've already laid out and uh just being kind of a, a flea nerd and loving the music man kind of sound it was fun throwing the the giant humbucker on the back of it what's the idea by having the the single coil or the the neck pickup there slanted like in that direction uh comfort uh it it, it probably brightens up that this this low end and makes it speak a little bit more ever mm. so subtly but uh i don't know N nothing nothing specific yeah yeah I think it's a feel thing I'll play I'll, I'll play here a quarter of the time I'll play here a quarter of the time but you know more than half of the time I'll, I'll be bridged up right here and I'm just so used to it now yeah and I what about no uh, preamp is there on board yes yes I'm all taped up right now <laughs> or, or no I'm not I'm just taped up on the back but yeah there's an onboard preamp oh it's hard to get into it's it's a, this is if anything's breaking down on this instrument it's it's this plate but it's a million times better than my wall, which I just got. I got an 88 wall. Ooh. Uh, was How'd you the, score that one? Got this on, uh, on reverb.com, which is a fucking dangerous place to go. <laughs> I was going to say, it's that very seems like a dangerous place to go. It's number... Beware, uh, kids. 3061, and it's, um, it's olive facing, it's mahogany body, and it's Indian fucking rosewood on the neck, and I love this thing. I just got it uh, refurbished. I got it for, I got it for like three grand. I put it like another 500 into it, and it looks as good as some of the $7,000 ones on there. Yeah. And I love it that it, it's kind of beaten and loved. It was it was probably in some bar You're in definitely Ireland. Definitely player. Yeah, as a player, and I, I wanted that. I didn't want something pristine, but I love having kind of like a piece of history and taking it out on the road, and I'm just happy I found it. Are you using like the first one you pulled out and then this one, uh, like uh, different tunings or different songs, different eras of the band? Or I've soloed with this one time. I'm having uh, little uh, problems kind of dialing it in. I haven't gotten it exactly where I want it without having to get into my amps mm -hmm. and try and make it sound better, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> because because that's not that's not its place. My main bass kind of controls all the all the settings on my amps. Gotcha. Yep. And uh, what's the last? I see a Rickenbacker. Well, I, yeah, I've got a '74 Rickenbacker here that I got from uh, some fisherman in Portland, Maine. 
<laughs> and I love this thing. How'd you get it from a fisherman? Oh, I'm just making that up. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> no, I, got it, I got it on eBay from Portland. But okay. Everyone's a fisherman in Portland. Right? Yeah, that's all I see. I just assume. There. Yeah. We always play on a pier when we're there. Why not have a wide sweeping generalization? Yeah. Portland. That's what fishing. I'm doing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's for the audience. <laughs> Quit destroying my illusion. And uh, the only thing I've changed, I changed a couple of things. I changed the tuners out and I, and I put a new guard on here because it looked like garbage. Gar garbage. Ooh. And I recorded the song Wildfire with this thing because uh, Nick wanted a really dirty sound. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm capable of a completely horribly filthy sound with this thing. And that's just from that bass gives you that horrible, gnarly sound. Yes, just mid-range on a thousand, going through the Sans Amp with the, uh, with the uh, presence just jacked <laughs> totally and it's so it's so much fun it's really hard to control on stage because this is a total microphone so it's the only thing that i have at all that uh i have to worry about feedback okay yeah but it's so fun and people i i see gear nerds uh loving when i pull it out because they know what song we're going to play and it's a really yeah. it's a fun song to listen to and it's a fun song to perform and it's a fun song to play yeah yeah which Just is kind of in general a great uh equation yeah, you got to have both. I mean, I love, I love performing as much as I love, you know, like playing a, a like a technically difficult song. But I don't. I just I just like being on stage. Yeah. And I think the thing that makes us last long is that it is interesting for musicians to enjoy our music, m most most of it, and then for the fans too. Just like it, it makes sense. It doesn't. All of it doesn't go over their head. Yeah. Yeah. So, talk bases. What we got here? We got uh. More Warwick. Yeah, we've got Warwick Helberg stuff all the way up and down the line. I, I went with the high cab and the big cab as far as filling out the, the, the space. Um, are these 10s or 12s? These are 10s. Okay. And these are 18s. Oof. And there's one facing down. <laughs> Does this? It's like PA yeah, style forced air. And awesome. what's. Why, I guess, always is bigger and better, right? But uh, why not a 15 instead of an 18? Why the 18? You know, I, I've had 15s and I, I've had 18s and I've had 10s and I've had 8s and gosh, who knows how small. That's probably about as small as I ever went. But yeah. and, and SWR and, and Randall stuff when I was a kid, which, is, which was hilarious sounding. Never, could never, it was always like plasticky <laughs> sounding. So, and it's been forever since I've really enjoyed a rig, just something about um, doing in-ear monitors, of course, has mm -hmm. changed what you want to hear on stage, but I've never been more happy with when I could dial this in to getting the sound out of it I want to. SWR stuff was always a little quiet for me, but pure, and uh, when they started talking about how quality the components were that they were putting in, what Jonas wanted to do with making a rig and making it be like a Neve on the road. I was like, you can experiment on me. So we, we worked it out. And these are some of the first cabinets that they, that they made. There's incredibly, incredibly low numbers. Oh, before, so you got these before, early. Yeah, before 100 on some of them, and then some, a couple of them are like fours and fives. So, and, and again, I've beaten the living crap out of these things. And they've held up great. Yeah. It's, it's too bad that more people can't get them because they're so expensive, but they're amazing touring rigs. And maybe sometimes that's, that's the, the cost. Like, I wouldn't want to buy this twice, but I've beaten this up more than, than you know, yeah. you, anyone would ever, ever need to. And it's held up incredibly. The only thing I need to do is tighten the screws because it, it, it'll break itself eventually. Yeah, well, imagine with those 18s rattling. Yeah, and I've changed out the, the speakers a couple of times, but or maybe just once over at least probably approaching 10 years. And so and then you got the Warwick, you got the actual preamp, and then you got the power amps. Yep. And then you're, are you running both of those at, at the same time, or is that just one being a backup? I am running both. These are the, those are the bottom ones and these, these are the top ones. I can do four more with this, with this whole rig and that's how I run in amphitheaters. Wow. When we do that and that is so much fun. There's nothing like it. I bet. Yeah, it's, it's, 
it is a it's a responsibility that you got to keep in control because you know you don't you got microphones on stage left and right and you don't want to hurt hurt people yeah <laughs> which is altogether too possible with this much power and uh it sounds great again the amps have held up just incredible i mean they're getting bounced around hundreds and hundreds of miles but tens of thousands of miles over yeah. the course of a tour um it's great the radial has simplified everything i had to sit down with our like monitor guy and 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 my tech and they were like we found this thing that we think will really help and, and you know make it make your system really really clean and make the the bass switching which is essential to my show um make it just streamlined mm -hmm. so having the radial in there is really nice um and really super easy to use, especially with the instructions glued on. Top yeah. of it. <laughs> that's I'm always like, the okay, key. It makes it easier. You know, we're 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 musicians. We don't want to have to think about it. Yeah. But to to go A to B really easy, the mute's right there on on the front. We've we've got a foot pedal for it as well when I tune. It's it's a good system. Cool. We're, well, we're ready for TV. We're ready for <laughs> stage. You guys are going places. I think. <laughs> Let's but, talk about your pedals. Yeah, of course. All right, Peanut. We're at. You're at your little stomp station here. Talk to me about uh, what you got on the board and what you're using and how you're doing it. Well, I, what is it? In the first album, I had a big muff and used that on a song called Hydroponic. Mm -hmm. And in the studio, Eddie Offord, our producer, um, had a, I don't know what, what he had. It was, it was some onboard whatever, um, some even type, mm -hmm. right? And he dialed in some incredible envelope sound. And I'd never been able to recreate it. Like, made it sound like a lightsaber. Yeah. More or less, like a bass lightsaber. Not Which a, is not awesome. A, not a soprano lightsaber, like over there. But, <laughs> so I figured out how to do that. Uh, and and uh, with the Big Muff still, and I've been through a dozen over the years, um, but not like Tim and Wawa pedals. Tim and, Tim's got probably a garbage bag full of Wawa pedals. But I, I do that with, a, with the MXR bass envelope and, a, and a, the muff, and I'll throw the octaver on there if I want to make it really, really juicy and play it an octave up. And I'll do that throughout the show. I'll do it in all mixed up. Um, I, thro I throw it around. It's, it's kind of my go-to. Yeah. Since it's an octave up, it's easy to, to transpose, and uh, it's just, makes a makes a dynamic you know, like a mm -hmm. huge o overload and if i want to control it at all uh anything sound wise i, I really love my diamond compressor uh, I, I rely on that a lot in the stage show sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't kind of depending on i can't tell if it's the power or the room yeah or whatever all those different variables it can, sometimes yeah but i use it in the studio a lot uh, when we're rehearsing more than on on record and on stage uh, solo wise I'll, I'll rely on it um, but most of the time live it will squash things too much and I and I want to hear everything kind yeah. of breathe especially the the envelope I and mean, that's the point I'm like why isn't that and like oh there it is like, <laughs> and then bing so I uh, gotta have a sans amp I learned that from Bob Rock um, it's just uh, you gotta overdrive and 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 you know, uh, fuzz are so different. Yeah. And and I, I, I'm sure as a kid I couldn't have cared less, but I'm a 43 year old man and it's fun to have fun to have different yeah. tools for the for the weapon. Uh, why not? Do you feel with the Big Muff that it ever takes too much of? I mean, I think the critique of a fuzz, whether it's guitar or bass, it, it takes a lot of that low end out. Do yeah. you feel like that particular model or do you have a setup? that compensates for, for that kind of reduced bass? Scotch, our sound guy, uh, who we've done albums with as, as well, knows what I'm gonna do backwards and forwards, mm -hmm. and he's taken a dry signal, so he, he'll... He has that. Yeah, he, he won't lose low end. Okay. Yeah, not much. Oh yeah, look at that dramatic loss of light. <laughs> you guys have clouds here. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> we do. Yeah, it's incredible. We commissioned them for the shoot. Actually. And that was always the problem with the Big Muff, is like, God, you know, I, I heard it from everybody in the band, too. Like, your bottom just disappears. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't care. It sounds great. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm taking a little break from the low end to, you know, break some windows with, yeah. my, with my chainsaw of noise. And then the, the loop station and my delay really are mostly just for soloing. 
That is a huge delay. Yeah, I ha I had two or three on my board at one time. I remember you used to have a, a timeline, and a, I can't yeah. remember the other one you had, but yeah. I had the timeline on there, and I had another, like a, an analog, like an MXR something or other, and I just, I like, why not have the best on there, having the, having the Moog, it just makes my day. It's fun to play with, but usually I just set it uh, for, for uh, tap, tapping and not too much feedback and just kind of do whatever I'm going to do. Lately I've been, loop-wise, I've been trying to do the Stranger Things arpeggio <laughs> into uh, uh, Heathens by 21 Pilots. But usually people don't get it. Or I loop like shit. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> and it's, that's been really fun to try uh, getting better at. Uh, the the only crazy thing is that I'm doing all my experimentation on stage, right in front of people. Yeah, I don't have a, a looper at home, <laughs> and I and, uh, and I I don't know. It's fun. It's fun to it's fun to try it. It's tr fun to get it right. It's 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 great to be able to just level it out. If if I didn't get the loop right, I'll just solo without it. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm sure it's I can cover my bases. That's a way for you to still have feel, I guess reinvigorated on stage you know so i'm sure some bands that tour for a long time they get into a groove and necessarily almost a rut where you guys change your set list you, yeah. you do perform these solos so yeah. you're trying new things you're, you're trying to do the stranger things yeah why why not it's 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 fun yeah it's a it's it's an exercise in who knows what's going to happen and you've got to try for something new. I couldn't imagine doing less and less tricks. You know, more and more tricks is, is fun. Or if not more, different ones yeah. here and there. Just try, try something out. I mean, it's a, we're in a creative position. We might as well take advantage of it. Peanut, I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for coming with us and talking yeah. about your gear. Yeah. Come out to see these guys do their tricks. Rig Rundown. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.